Welcome to Awake with Javon. My name is Javon Pera, and I have the privilege and the honor and the treat to have Barbara Amalia Schaefer Birdner, who is a, an amazing light worker and supporter for me in particular, and so many people out in the world just by her work and her presence. Uh, so maybe you don't even you never even heard of her, heard of her, but promise you've been supported by her. <laughs> so, hello, Barbara. Hello, Javon. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> You're welcome. My hope is that we spread and um, propagate an idea of awakening. What is it to be awake? And I think we all have ideas about this. Some people talk about enlightening or you know, getting somewhere. What, what is our purpose for existence? And it kind of touches on that, this word awakening. And it's a curious word for me because that's, it, it is evolving and spreading. And every time I think I have a grasp on it, it, it expands so much that the grasp eludes me. It's gone. So then I'm floating in space again. So, so tell me, before we get into your journey, because I want this, that's my question three. My question one is, what is it to be awake? What does that mean as an expert? I'm going to say that I resonate with your um, thing of you think you know what it is, and then there's more. <laughs> um, so that's really a big piece. So what is it to me that it means to be awake? Um, it's awareness. It's the understanding that we're more than this physical form. And you've probably heard, you know, phrases or themes of um, you uh, um, you're basically a soul in a human body, okay? So um, there are many different stages of awakening and being awake and those experiences, and they're different for everybody. Uh, yet primarily is the understanding that there's so much more to you than, than just, than only this. Mm -hmm. okay? um, and that you have so much more of a connection. Yes, that's, that is absolutely true. That's a good answer. So <laughs> I, I'd also like to mention that, that you've been in, in pursuit of this, uh, this answer for, um, maybe your whole life before you even knew you were pursuing it. Uh, and since, since, um, since you've had an awakening uh, through an event, you've been certified and trained and have been training on all kinds of modalities, like soul contract. And we were just talking about uh, a, no, a number of things. I mean, what, what, are the, what are the expertise that does not define you but maybe people know about that you use as tools. I mean, what are these things that, that you do that you pull out? <laughs> Cause there's nothing, there is no, there is nothing other, uh, more than there actually, there is no other system like Barbara. Cause Barbara is, is Barbara mother, <laughs> Hagen, right? This there doesn't define you, but, but what are the, all the things that you've been doing and learning and, uh, and mix in there, how, how you awakened. Yeah, that's what I, I'll start with how I awaken, because I think that it's a journey that's very, very similar to most of the people on the planet, um, at least. Uh, so I'm 61 years old. Well, 60 years old. Real soon here, I'll be 61. Um, and my age group <laughs> uh, didn't really have the internet <laughs> to <laughs> be sharing with this information or podcasts. There certainly wasn't a radio show called Awake with Javon, <laughs> right? So um uh, so we had a little bit of a different situation um, uh, than the young people. And even, as I say, that we, us older people have been sending messages back <laughs> to source so that the young people like yourself, as you were born, um, could make uh, a little easier choices. Um, but I'm going to start with that actually, um, uh, as a young child, I was already awake. As many, many of the children today, they're born awake. You're beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous children. Javon, as you know, your your little Buddhas, <laughs> right? Um, so as a young child, my you know one of I'll just briefly mention that as a young child, I I had had some disturbances in my life, some upheavals, and I remember when I was 
you know, four or five ish. Um, and uh, I, Jesus used to speak to me. He would stand here. I could see him and we would talk. He was my invisible buddy. And at one time the um, nun, uh, at least what I heard the nun say is that I couldn't speak to Jesus because um, I wasn't a priest. So even as a young child, I was very smart. Um, even though I'm blonde, I was still very smart, and I uh, changed his name to Casper. And so I was allowed by the Catholic Church to speak to Casper uh, until I was a preteen. And I recall my, my mother saying to me that I was just too old to be having a little invisible friend and I needed to send him away. So the part of why I share that is because for really for about 12 years of my life, I was awake, right? I had connections. I knew things. I um, I had, had had experience and witnessed some, some not so great things, yet I still knew there was something beyond me. But when my mom and dad told me that I couldn't speak, speak to Casper anymore, I literally turned it off, okay? And it was almost like I went from what we might use the word awake to fully unconscious, okay? Mm -hmm. And then continued to live a life as a human being and went on to become an engineer and um, uh and had a pretty love, you know, pretty lovely life. I was very successful in engineering. I was very, very young, 32 years old. I was the manager of gas and electric engineering for PG&E, the electric company in Northern California, a really big company, and had like 300 engineers that um, uh, that I was responsible for. They didn't all directly work for me, but I was responsible for them. And um, uh, and my life from the outward seemed pretty great. Um, but uh, really the only time I was happy was when I was working or when I was shopping. <laughs> so I made great money, like literally um, with, with my stock plan and company car and all that, I was making over 100K a year uh, in 1993, okay, which is like, that's a lot today, right? Um, but I just wasn't happy and it was costing my marriage and um, my health. And so I left there, but I didn't change the way I was doing things. And then to answer your question, how did I awaken? <laughs> um, I yeah. was strongly guided years earlier, um, just got a dog, got a Siberian Husky, and it led to me wanting to do dog sled racing. And it led me to my very first dog sled race in 1997. And on February 9th, 1997, uh, February 8th, I ran my first race. It was really great. And um, on the second day, I was thrown from the sled and hit my head, and I stopped breathing and was dead for seven minutes. Um, and uh, that's a whole nother entire hour long interview about that experience. Yet, um, I went from a very analytical, actually didn't even believe in God um, person. So when I shut off, I couldn't talk to Jesus. I didn't even believe in God anymore. Wow. If Jesus didn't live in me, then, you know, what is there? Maybe there's some aliens, but that's about all I was, you know, willing to connect with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so suddenly um, I had this <laughs> uh, shocking awakening that also included some severe health issues. Mm. Um, so uh, suddenly um, I could see numbers and symbols over people's heads when they talked. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, I was hypersensitive. I was so sensitive. I couldn't talk on a telephone. And in order to be in my kitchen, I needed to unplug the refrigerator or it would trigger a migraine. Okay. So some of you are like, what? <laughs> That's happening to me. Okay. So yeah, that happened to me in 97 when nobody even knew the words. We hardly had words for highly sensitive person, much less impact. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was an instant, highly, highly, high impact, basically. Um, and had to kind of keep myself in my, in my health. So that was my um, uh, awakening, you know, like a really literally, I say the planet hit me on the head, um, which then led me down a path of physical healing, um, which then eventually, um, about seven years later, uh, led me to a lay on high end healer. I tried everything. I spent all my money. I tried everything. All doctors could do was give me Prozac. Um, and because at that time they didn't, they still don't understand brain injuries. But uh, anyway, I took this lay on hand healer and he laid his hands on my head. And for three days I was healthy again. And I had hope. And I mm. could remember 
what it was like to be healthy. Because even prior to this, for several years, I couldn't walk 10 feet without passing out. Hmm. I couldn't have been, done this interview with you. I couldn't have had this, you know, I have an air conditioner running in the background um, because it would have triggered the migraine. Wow. Right? And backaches and just like a lot of pain. Um, and uh, so your other question was something about all these modalities that I'm trained in. Well, yeah. The, <clears throat> um, that was since then. The, yeah, yeah. So what I knew when I came to, this is kind of funny. So I came to from this head injury, like, you know, literally like, you know, a guy who was an ER doctor is the one who came, he was a musher, but he, a dog sled racer, but he came up upon me. And what I knew was that like I had, I, I mean, I couldn't, I was dizzy. I you know, was vomiting and blacking out. Um, but it was like I had had this dream and I say, quote, 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 you know, with dream. Um, because I realized now it wasn't a dream, but I had a dream that I learned all kinds of stuff. Like I got a PhD in a bunch of things, like more than a PhD, but I didn't know how to describe it. The, well, during your near death experience, near, near, during this near death experience, but I did not recall any of it. Mm -hmm. First of all, I thought it was a dream. Okay. Because I wasn't metaphysically trained. I didn't know what all this was. Um, but I did think it was kind of weird that when people talked about their problems, I would see numbers and symbols floating over their heads. <laughs> yes. But Not everybody does that. High, I don't know why. I know. Right. You know, and I used to be a high powered engineer, so it kind of made sense, but I didn't know the, the formula for this. Mm -hmm. Right. And so through my physical healing, I was introduced to this lay on hand healer. Um, Learned many years, figured out just only recently. So that was in 2004, I think, when I met him. So 16 years later, um, just recently, I would look back and went, oh, my word. I was actually, he, he was gifted at being able to see and help people to, to for him to facilitate um, shrinking of cancer tumors or actually literally pulling them out. And um, I have worked with people in a similar way. And I just recently went, oh, my word, I thought I was his client and I became his business manager, but I was really learning his techniques as well, mm -hmm. you know, by being there with him and being in his presence and watching what he did and how he did it. Um, but about the numbers and symbols, because it's related to this whole contract that we were talking about earlier, um, I met a, uh, later, I met a woman, um, 2011, 2010 ish, I met a woman um, who, um, we wound up invited to stay at our house. I met her on Facebook, of all places, right? Oh, just come up and spend the weekend with us. <laughs> so she came to visit and she had, this is just a, this is just a bill for my dog sled stuff, but um, she had a brochure. And this isn't the brochure, it was, it was folded like this. And she had this brochure sitting on the bed and I picked it up and I looked at it. And it said, light body surgery, Lotus Sword light body surgery training. I went, I need to learn that. She looked at me and went, you are not a light body surgeon. And I went, in my head, I went, you don't know. <laughs> but um, uh, turns out she had been holding this brochure for 11 years. And it was a brochure of Nicholas David Mann, who is the caretaker of the Soul Contract reading work. Um, and at the, time, at the time of the brochure was made, um, of his wife, who was still his business partner, um, Almira. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, so I pulled the brochure and I went online and I, uh, what she was doing was, excuse me, this gal had saved her shirt. She was saving up her money to work with Nicholas and Almira because this woman was a fully conscious walk-in. We'll talk about that another time. Mm -hmm. But she was a fully conscious being who was having a hard time integrating into her physicality. Um, and she knew that working with um, Nicholas and or Almero was going to be helpful for her. So I go online and they weren't offering light body surgery anymore. What? Like they weren't teaching that anymore. Like, really? <laughs> I'm supposed to learn that. I got this flyer so from they... 11 years ago. What? This is not happening? <laughs> so they, um, uh, they had some prerequisites anyway. And one of the prerequisites was uh, uh, learning a divine healing master key. Um, uh, which is a modality, okay, uh, and uh, a helpful modality with soul contract reading that Nicholas was teaching at the time, and in two weeks was a soul contract reading class, and I had just the right amount of money in my checking account to go take this class. Perfect. And I sign up for the class, 
and um, uh, as serendipitous as it, as it is, um, Nicholas knows stuff, <laughs> right? And he made a special class with just two of us in the class and had 12 other people in another class running at the same time. And I was one of the two in this very private class. And um, he asked me, would you like a reading before we start the class? And I'm thinking, no, I'm not gonna pay you for a reading. You're gonna teach me and I'll do my own reading. <laughs> and he just laughed at me, right? Well, we get to the class, he sends us our books and I open up the book. Remember I said that when people would talk about their problems, I would see numbers and symbols floating over their head? Mm -hmm. He, you might feel chills as I'm saying this, he had an entire system that matched almost perfectly to the numbers and symbols I would see at the people's head. Mm. And that's full contract reading. I call it name alchemy because it's through your name that we connect with this, and it's fairly accurate. Um, gives you an idea of the map of your life. What did mm -hmm. you plan out for this for this lifetime? So that started my journey. Um, I already at the time was a, a Reiki master teacher. Um, and yes, I have a little judgment over this because this is back when it took four years plus to become a Reiki master teacher. It wasn't one of those things where, you know, us old people go, and those young kids, they're just doing it in the weekend now. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm human. I have a little judgment over that. I know it's possible and I know it happens and I still am human, right? Wow. But uh, anyway, became a Reiki master teacher. Um, then had met Nicholas and took that course and then took uh, courses in divine healing from Almira uh, and then kept bugging them to teach Lotus Sword Light Body Surgery, which they did eventually teach and now they're teaching it again. Nice. And, so and that's just a few things. Tell me, tell me what, uh, briefly describe light body surgery, because that I'm, I'm thinking, uh, you know, is this, is this like from Star Wars with a boom, boom, is that, is that your, your scalpel as a lightsaber? It, it kind of is actually. Um, so, um, uh, so there's some basic processes. There are many, many people on planet, um, well, let me back up because you know, you're going to have all kinds of people who listen to your radio show. All right. So if you can imagine that um, we have our physical energy system, mm -hmm. all right, which we definitely feel if somebody pokes us or we get a cut or something like that. But we also have, and I'm going to be kind of basic here, right? But we also have um, an emotional, a mental, and a spiritual <laughs> energy system, okay? Now, within that are all kinds of structures and to me, it looks like wiring. Remember, I used to be an energy engineer, right? So I see things as energy, as voltage, as current, <laughs> as circuit breakers, right? Um, as switches, right? It's just how, it's how I see it. So there are some people who work on the etheric fields, which is part of your spiritual field, okay? And they will, let's say somebody's got some really bad headache, and they will go in and remove something in the etheric that is causing the headache down here in the physical, okay? Um, so there are a lot of people who do light body surgery. This particular one, um, what I've gleaned so far, uh, you know, because I'm forever a student, is that Lotus Sword Light Body Surgery um, really works on uh, a portion of sort of cleaning up your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual field, all right? to allow more room for your own light to come in, and then a set of sessions for rebuilding, as I see it, your circuitry. Because most of the people that I work with are advanced souls, so their soul energy is what you might call a very high frequency or a very high voltage. Voltage, you might think of, you know, like they're like transmission line kind of people, but there's a disturbance because our body is plug in the wall electricity, okay? Mm -hmm. And so light body surgery, um, uh, from the way that I look at it in the, the enveloping part um, that you were saying earlier, you know, that, well, Barbara's kind of got her own thing, but it's based on this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I, what I call embody light body is that the full picture of integrating your really high frequency soul into this body so that you can get on with your mission in life 
and have all the abundance that you know you're supposed to have. You're not supposed mm-hmm. to be living in the back of your car, really. You know, you, we planned it differently. All right. Yes, and and it's a good that's a good name too because it's your website embodylightbody.com. <laughs> so tell me, because this is that it seems to me that there is a pattern that happens, uh, and it can be seen in your life where we are born with an awareness and you had a higher awareness that you could you could talk to Jesus which is which is a wonderful thing but but then we we learn that that's not possible and then we we suffer we we accept these stories we accept different programming really uh that we we allow to happen and it gives us this different experience of darkness and and separation and and issues lots of issues um, and then we get a chance to um, to push through them, I guess, and evaluate the stories. It is this. Do you see this as a as an accurate explanation of life? And and is this the purpose of life? Do we have to have? Do we have to have all the darkness and the issues and the? I mean, you had your experience and reawoken, and you're all beat up. You, you were suffering. Is this, is it, do we have to have that? And what's its purpose? Okay. Well, first of all, um, uh, when, ener- let me tell everybody that when energy moves, I burp. And Javon and a few others have recently said to me, oh, Barbara, you know, when you burp, it's sort of like the fire breathing dragon is kind of cleaning up the energy. So I very quietly and politely was doing a burp, but a big one might be happening soon. That's everybody. right. Fire so, dragon mother. Just, That's <laughs> yeah, just know. letting you know, the I'm burp, really not being rude. It just happens to be a way. The burps it. happen, and uh, it's it's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so let me first address the all beat up part. Okay. So, yes, I had this awakening, and I, in my case, was both emotionally and physically beat up. The reason for being beat up was because I had a huge influx of my soul light that crash landed, all right? Really like, like somebody took the, the big old circuit breaker that was turned off, okay, to basically protect me. And it got opened up, which then fired all of my other electrical systems and made me sensitive to everything in the world. I was sensitive when someone walked in the room that they were not a fully clean and clear. And guess what? Most humans are not. All right. Mm-hmm. Made me sensitive. I couldn't go to the grocery store without like, I mean, I was, I was like a lot of children these days are born um, with uh, symptoms of autism. I say symptoms because I, I don't like to say, you, you know, you, you have it, you know, we'll say diagnosed with autism. And I had to wear those, those soundproof headphones just to be able to go into a grocery store for 15 minutes. Um, you know, and just like rush in, rush out, because I was so overwhelmed with the energies in the world. So I was beat up, but it was more a symptom of the light coming in, rather than like I got in trouble or anything, Mm -hmm. okay? So, um, uh, so to answer your next question is that, um, do, you know, what is the purpose and, and, you know, we'll kind of weave them together and, and do we have to go through all of this, all right? So, I'll mention a little bit about um, this death experience. Um, that uh, I got a visceral, I'm, I'm an experiential learner, so you know I get to experience a lot of things. I had a visceral experience of what it was like to be dead. My soul literally went back to source. And to give you an idea, you might get chills as I'm talking, okay, because I, when I feel them, then usually people listening you know, start to feel them as well. <clears throat> For those of you that have had children um, or have witnessed so, you know, babies being born, you can imagine what it's like for a new parent, let's say especially a mother, when she's gone through all of this pain, <laughs> both for nine months carrying this baby, but also the actual pain of labor, all right? And the baby is born, and she's in a tremendous amount of pain, usually. I mean, that's kind of like a typical thing. It doesn't have to be that way, but typically. And the moment they lay that baby on her breast, she's enveloped in this bubble of love and there is no pain and there is nothing but this moment 
of love. And that moment of love is what it's like when I was dead. All right? So what does that have to do with does it have to be hard down here? No. Because when you're up there, or when I was up there, my personal experience was, there was no good, there was no bad, it was all source. Okay? There was no, there was only judgment with me. The only judge was me. The Bible has taught us that God is the judge, and that was not my experience. The experience was it was sort of a self-grading process. God went, hey, how was your trip? <laughs> right? So back to do we have to experience it so badly down here? It's almost like the way that I experienced it is that for many pieces of it, we chose it. Now, okay, hold on, because those of you, like myself, who have, have experienced rape, molestation, um, witnessed horrific deaths, okay? You're like, what? I didn't plan that. Okay, I'm not saying that you planned to be raped, all right? I did not plan to be raped. What I did plan, though, was experiences of disempowerment so that I could connect with my own power. Now, how they play out was partially up to me and some of the choices I made, but also up to the other people around me and the choices they made, okay? So when you're at source, you don't know good and bad. It's like all one. You know, you can look standing there at Lucifer and go, hey, bud, you know, yeah, you got a rough job. Okay, you don't have any judgment around it. But it also, when you're up there and there's no difference and no contrast, we don't get to experience experience the fine tuning, the, the, the breadth of what we do here. Because in contrast with the light and the dark, we can see the nuances and experience them as a soul viscerally through this body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in some ways we can say that we chose to be here. Well, I kind of remember it. Some of us chose, some of us all well, of us volunteered, and some of us got kicked down here. Okay. Literally, some of us like got kicked down here. Okay, not me. I, I seemed like I did choose it. Sometimes I question that. Okay, but mostly we, we in this reality, we get to experience the contrast and through experiencing the contrast. And if you can come to the, the blending of what I call the divine union of the dark and the light and the yin and the yang within you, in this dense form, that is source. Mm. That is the expression we came here to be. So you, you say you, you, you chose, you didn't choose to be raped, but you chose to be in situations of disempowerment. And that experience is for what? Is it, is it, is it so that you can see that it's all connected? Or what, what's the purpose of choosing disempowerment or any number of, of what we would consider dark of things. experiences, yeah. So and when I say choose, what I mean is that my experience of having a death experience is that there was a palette of things, <laughs> you know, a palette of energy that I wanted to, we'll say, I, how, I, how I look at it is wanted to get a major in <laughs> while I was down here, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people will say learn, but it's not learn like a lesson. It's more like going to college kind of thing. And one of the things that, you know, like, I mean, I remember seeing this, is that a palette that I chose was disempowerment. And part of that was because I was a powerful being, a powerful soul, but I needed some, I wanted some fine tuning of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in contrast, I experienced what it was like to not be powerful, to remember how powerful I am. And what kind of power. So, for example, having experienced a rape, I got to experience, um, we'll say, um, power that was not pretty, okay, that was not, um, um, that was forceful, okay, that was um, uh, uncontrollable, all right, which that's what we're afraid of, okay. So, kind of made me a little bit of afraid of my own power, all right? Because, oh my gosh, I know I'm powerful, but I don't want to be like that. So instead, I'll just not be powerful at all. But it gave me an experience 
so that I could go, well, wait a minute. I want to be powerful in a different way. Hmm. I want to be powerful in harmony. <laughs> okay, whatever that was about. <laughs> I don't seem to have a really great gift of telling you the story behind the burps. <laughs> like your mind's going, what was, what was that clearing? Something around disempowerment. Something around coming into your power. Okay? Because we have so many experiences here in the world of power being out of balance, out of harmony, and power being forced. But we came here to be, to shine our power, mm -hmm. right? Now, is this, is this, does this help? How does this help uh, an eternal uh, being? Like, cause you, you're an eternal being that comes to earth to experience life as a human incarnate to experience darkness and separation that doesn't exist where you came from. Uh, right. Are you, are you with me so far on that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. You didn't say that. So I was just checking in <laughs> and it's a good paraphrase. Yes. Paraphrase. And, and so I'm going to come and experience disempowerment. How does that help this other being? Because it's not like you're not that being still, right? You're still, you are still that eternal being and you are here incarnated now and you're going to not so, be incarnate at some point. How does that, how does that benefit you as a higher self? So think of it again, like school. I do call this schoolhouse earth. Okay. Um, think of it as school where you came to get a PhD. So I came to get a PhD in power. All right. Among other things. <laughs> doing everything the friggin hard way so I can learn how to do it with ease and grace. Um, you know, being afraid of my own uh, shadows, as some people would call it, so I could love all parts of myself and learning how to trust myself and others. Okay, so that's like, a, that's like my big thing. Um, yet, up at source, being a powerful being is easy because you are. And even if you haven't fully expressed yourself, it's okay because you're at source and remember everything is good, nothing's bad. So to speak, right? You don't look at it good and bad. Okay. So down here, it literally, at least how I see it, is that literally you get this experience. If you could do this stuff in density, <laughs> I keep touching my face to say density, because mm -hmm. this is a 3D density body, right? Three dimensional density, okay? Where source is like unlimited. When you can do those things in a dense arena, mm -hmm. You get to fine tune it. So it's like I get to up level or upgrade, right? Mm -hmm. I get to fine tune. I'm already powerful, but I get to come and hear in this density and remember how powerful I am. Mm -hmm. Remember so that the gifts that I bring. Kind of like if you're uh, training for uh, um, some kind of uh, endurance training and you go up to the mountains in, in thin yeah. air and you wear one of those masks that limits the air, you make it harder for yourself yeah. on purpose. Yes, yes. So you can fine tune, okay? Um, and boy, I'll tell you, here on Earth, it's dense, okay? There's a lot of yuck going on. Mm -hmm. And so when we're able to um, experience this life with joy, no matter what's going on around us, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. So is that a benefit? Uh, what, I mean, what is the scope of benefit of that? Because it's not just your experience, right? This is, uh, how does that help the whole? It, are, we, are we helping the world by, by finding peace? Yeah, yeah we are. So, um, so one of, I got a couple of things like a, a long time ago, um, you know, somebody had come to me when I first started um, offering sessions and this gal came to me and said, so what's your philosophy? I didn't realize she meant like, what guru do I follow? Okay. Um, and so, you know, I did this big deep thing and I went, well, I you know, came up with my little thing, which is relationships are our greatest source of personal and spiritual growth. And that includes our relationship with our family that we were born into, our friends, hmm. our spouses, our businesses or our career, that's like another marriage, okay? Our business or our career is like a marriage, okay? Our children. And it's through those relationships in this density 
that we really get to know each other ourselves in a deeper way, mm -hmm. right? And then there's relationship with self. And the biggest thing for me is that um, when you're at source, man, that is peace. Okay, that is peace and love and all those things that me as a hippie in college, <laughs> you know, would sing my praises about. And world peace to me starts with inner peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, so part of my mission is to create world peace through inner peace. So we'll say part of my job. All right. So what are the benefits? There are some benefits to the world. Okay. Part of my job is to help people to create inner peace to then, you know, flow out wordly to mm -hmm. their family, their friends, their work, and then create the ripple of world peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll kind of call it that sort of part. That's sort of the philanthropist part. All mm -hmm. right. And now, the way that we not that everybody is, is we can yeah. embody our light body. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> You're so good, Javon. <laughs> it's one way. Yeah. It's not the only way. Okay. The light body um, services that I offer is not for everybody. Not everybody needs to experience this. Mm -hmm. Some do because it's an accelerated way. It's a way to accelerate what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But there are people, I mean, because I'd like to talk to you because like, there, there are people. And um, uh, so there's someone in my family who is very, very connected. Okay. Amazing. Like in some ways, a bit of a, like a, you know, high level monk reincarnated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yet came here to have a regular old life. All right, bunch of kids, bunch of grandkids, and what appears to be a regular old life. And some people might judge that and say, that person's not all that enlightened, all right? What are they doing for the world? That soul presence, that soul agreeing, a volunteering, being pushed but still here, okay, mm -hmm. to have this essence and this frequency on this planet, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. We sometimes yeah. think we're not doing enough here, but you I, being here is enough. Yeah, like you, like you told my wife, Carolyn, how, what a beautiful thing that she's doing for the world by so much love in her cooking for our family and all her preparation and, and even in her working out, like how it's literally changed our neighborhood. <laughs> our neighborhood mm -hmm. knows her for all her things. And she, she makes such a huge difference just being uh, authentically herself. Yes, and that's, you nailed it, authentically yourself. Because what are we really, and I know this kind of like sounds like spiritual mumbo jumbo, but it's true. What are we literally? We are literally love. Mm. But can you love everything? Now, we use my husband. My husband and I have been together for 40 years. We've tried to get divorced three and a half times. <laughs> He's tried to die on me a couple of times. <laughs> I've tried to die on him a couple of times and we're still here and we love each other more than we ever have. Okay. Now I love him and I love him deeply. And even during the times that we were trying to divorce, I still loved him. I may have hated his behaviors. All right. Yet I was still able to love him. Mm. Okay? So I'm not saying that we don't, we get to have anger. We get to have hate and we can love as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go back a little bit and then I'd like to answer my, my third questions of, of how, what's the best, how could you direct us to awaken but before that? Cause you had touched on this already about your near death experience and you were, had, you came back with a PhD education kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, now, is, is that first question, would that be considered what would be called a walk-in? And two, is a walk-in like the show Travelers? Because I just obsessed with three seasons of Travelers. <laughs> and hmm. Who introduced you to Travelers? <laughs> yes, this is your fault. I couldn't sleep. I had to watch it all that long. So uh, what is a walk-in? Was that a walk-in? And how, how similar is it to that that show that is so interesting <laughs> um 
so, uh, so we'll just start off with, um, I'll start off with what is a walk-in. So um, uh, some of you have experienced knowing people, or this has happened to yourself, where they have had an upheaval in their life. It could be a um, accident, a car accident, a surgery, a divorce, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, okay? Um, uh, where afterwards, you just look and go, they're not the same person, okay? And of course, they're not the same person. We're not the same person when we have a, a very severe loss in our lives, the loss of who we used to be, all right? So sometimes when these, especially again, my age group, okay, in my age group, um, probably 40 years old to about 60, 40 and older, okay, it wasn't unusual <laughs> that um, we would go, we are as a soul, would go, eh, we've pretty much kind of finished up what we uh, have wanted to experience here, but our body is generally healthy, okay, or, uh, or viable. Uh, and the soul says, I'm done, and I'm going to leave this body and allow a new soul to come in, okay? So we call that, it can be called a walk-in. It's also called a wanderer. Um, it's called, I also call it a soul exchange. And so it's where literally the soul that was born into the body through a long process, I won't get into all the details of it, but the, the big piece is that that soul leaves and a new soul comes in. Now, for a while, they're both there, and there's all kinds of pieces about that, but we'll just say that it's two completely different souls. The way that I talk about it, some of you on the podcast can't see this, but I'm holding up like a little diamond-shaped kind of a thing, and then, well, I'll just hold up a not-so-diamond-shaped little thing so I can have two of them, but it's like the soul that was born into the body uh, has agreed to leave, and another soul has agreed to basically take on this life. Mm -hmm. All right. And it could be an aspect of your same soul, right? Like, because our, our souls are way bigger than most people can conceive. But, right, but that would not be a walk in. Okay. All right. So that's so we'll back up. Generally, a lot of people, a lot of people who don't understand the, the, the details of walk ins, and we're going to back up. Words are dense and words are very challenging to describe the things that we see at source. So we come up with labels and descriptions to do our good job. Okay, so I won't say this is perfect. I'll say it's a pretty good job. All right. So um, we're gonna. I'm gonna interrupt you to say that. So when I had my when I had this head injury, mm -hmm. okay, um, and died, and I remembered this. I would tell this story. I just didn't have a word for it. And I would tell it this way. I would say, you know, I had this dream. Because remember, I thought it was a dream. I had this dream. And I went up and I reconnected with this diamond. It's like the, so again, I'm going to say the facet, I would say this, I'd say the facet that was here in this body came up and connected with this diamond. And all of these facets were talking to God, but really it was the facet called Barbara that was born in this body, all right? And um, uh, literally at the time, you know, God, the uh, karmic board basically uh, said, uh, hey, okay, well, you got to go back. And I went, F you, I'm not going back. <laughs> and they said, but your job isn't complete. And I said, I don't care. I'm not going back. Uh-uh, no way. And as I rotate this little diamond, another facet raised her hand and said, I'll come down. All right, I'll do it. So that facet came down into this body. Mm -hmm. That is what I would call a soul rotation. It's mm -hmm. like all aspects of my soul, all of us have a fractal that we are experiencing here. Some of us have connections to more fractals than others, all right? That's the journey of awakening is connecting to all of your fractals, all right? Um, and so a new fractal came down. So I was still Barbara. I still loved my husband. I still loved my dog. And suddenly I had no interest in doing engineering, which is lucky because I couldn't do math anymore either. Um, but. So that's called a soul rotation. So I can't tell you how many people met me and they would say, oh, you had a walk-in. And I'd go, I didn't have a walk-in. It's called a soul rotation, okay? Because so many people do not understand the nuances. I'm an expert at soul, at walk-in, soul exchanges, soul changes, and awakening, and I don't have the perfect words for it, okay? 
So people will go, oh, you're a walk-in. And sometimes I just go, yes, I am, because it's just easier in the conversation, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, but I'm not, I'm not. So then let's go to, there's another one, all right? So did I answer kind of the question about a walk-in? A walk-in is a completely different soul, mm -hmm. all right? Then there's a soul rotation, which is the same soul, different aspect, okay? Then there's something that actually happens as part of a, often as part of a walk-in, but can happen with a walk-in or not. And that is where you've got two different souls. Oops, I'll kind of go back to my thing. Okay, two different souls. And both souls are in the body at the same time. That's called a soul braid. Okay, so it's two different souls soul braid. in the body at the same time. A soul braid. And it is often a part of the walk-in process. So what will happen is often, let's say often, especially in my age group, again, because young people, we kept sending these messages on how to do it easier, faster, and better. And most, of, and many of them listen, okay? But we'll say that it's very common historically that um, the walk-in soul, the new soul, will come into the body while the old soul, soul is still there for a while. So they're both there for a while. So sometimes these people after a car accident or after a, a big loss in their life will be considered schizophrenic mm -hmm. because they have two personalities, mm. all right? And so then they'll go on some meds for a while and, you know, <laughs> all now of these, that. But so that's, go ahead. These, uh, this new aspect or, of the soul or the new soul completely, they have access to the body's old memories or uh, sometimes yes. or all the time, most of the time. Almost always, almost always have the body soul memories. And that's part of the conflict. So that is part of, uh, let me finish because that's part of the conflict for all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me, because it's for all of us, no matter what your experience is, whether you were born in this body and you are the same soul all the time, but you keep trying to, you keep working towards accessing more aspects of your soul. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without a big disturbance, because wouldn't that be great? That would be like the nicer, gentler way. And is that, is that, soul that you're talking that there are different aspects would that also be considered the older soul is that what you refer to when you say that or you know i have for about four years been trying to summarize what i would how i would describe an over soul everybody describes it just a little bit different but yes that is kind of how i look at it is that the um here i'm going to kind of do this so how I look at it is that the higher self is all your own personal soul fractals, okay? Which is also your oversoul, okay? Because it gets it a little blended here, okay? Remember, words are dense. Words mm -hmm. do not describe this accurately, okay? Mm -hmm. And the oversoul is also your complete access to source, okay? But through your higher self, you're accessing source. So do you see how it's kind of this blended thing, but they're separate, but they're different? Okay? Mm. It's like they encapsulate each other. So we don't think about it. If your higher self is all the aspects of your soul and your soul experiences, and the over soul encapsulates that um, to uh, also access um, uh, more and more diamonds and fractals. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? I distracted okay, so you. I don't, yeah, no, that's all right. I don't, I, I, that's a good question because I don't have a great answer just yet. And, you know, there are people who say the higher self and the over soul are the same. And I agree. And there are people who say that it's separate and I agree. <laughs> well, and, it's arbitrary, right? Because there is no, there is no uh, delineation. There are no lines. There are no levels. Uh, the reality, capital R and truth <laughs> and the light of it all is that it's all one, but yet here we are yeah. in duality. Yeah. We want to describe yeah. it. <laughs> I want to describe it. Well, our mind wants to describe it. Mind wants to describe it. Yeah. Okay. Because when our mind can describe it, it's a little bit easier for us to comprehend and connect with. Yes. But the whole deal is to get your mind out of the way. But you know, we have paths. We all have different paths, especially as smart people. So then another piece. Okay. So, um, so I experienced personally a soul rotation. Okay where a different fractal of my soul came here into the body. Still had all the memories of the original soul fractal. And I call that, or learned through Nicholas Nelmira, and it resonated with me as truth, a soul rotation. 
and funny because I used to tell people it was like a diamond rotated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. There you go. That's before I was became started to be metaphysically trained because I'm still not totally. All right. But you'll get there someday. Then in, yeah, you know, <laughs> when I'm 135, because that's, that's how long right. I plan on living. <laughs> so uh, in a healthy body and healthy mind. In 2016, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, had a surgery. Everything went fine. And then um, didn't get, got okay margins. And I had a choice of an optional surgery. And it, I did a lot of soul searching, a lot of physical searching and decided to have a second surgery. In that second surgery, I don't really remember it during the surgery, but when I woke up from the surgery, I kept saying, something happened. And I actually have a photograph of the before and after. I think I've shown it to you, Jafon. Um, I look different. I mm. look very different. And, and so many people, again, would say, oh, you had a walk-in. And I'd go, no, I didn't have a walk-in. Well, you had a soul rotation. No, I didn't have a soul rotation. Well, eventually, somebody said to me, did you, you had a walk-in and I went no and they said did you have a reincarnation in the same body and I felt it head to toe and I went whoosh yes what's yes that? that was it okay and what's that I know what that is so what that is is that if you can kind of think of that um your 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 diamond your chunk of source that is Devon okay or in this case the chunk of source that is Barbara with all these fractals that they had completed what they came to do. And the fractal got to get bigger, not the fractal, the diamond got to be bigger. So it's like I had a soul upgrade is the best way I can describe it. So mm -hmm. my soul upgraded. My soul got like literally like went up a level. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So it went up a level. Like if you think of even within, uh, you know, kind of think about dimensions within dimensions, there are very, can be various bands of, coloring or levels and so my soul jumped up a level mm. all right um again people think i had a walk-in no i didn't have a walk-in okay so we talked about um walk-ins um which is totally different soul is the way i look at it most of us do okay soul braid which is where part of a different soul or even could be a fractal of you comes in and braids okay mm -hmm. with the current one um a reincarnation in the same body. See, there's how many did I say here? So, uh, I lost track because I think there's another one I'm missing. That's that's Soul probably rotation. good enough for most. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you were and then, to, yeah. You're wanting to talk about how the memories, how the uh, yeah. So the, the big thing, all. whether you've had a soul awakening or a soul change which that's what I had, the soul changes, or soul exchanges, which is more like a walk-in, okay? To me, it doesn't matter. The, the, the secret, <laughs> you know, the secret sauce of life is integrating those soul aspects into this reality and expressing them through this physical form. That's, that's what we came to do, mm. okay? And... When we bring more and more light into this body, no matter how we did it, okay, but more and more of our remembering and our knowing is that we do hold the memories in our cellular memory, okay, in our bodies of the former experiences, whether that be a former soul, a slightly different aspect, it doesn't matter. Those memories are held here. And the idea is, the idea, like we're going to say the big idea is, that we experience some of these crappy or negative pieces, okay, to um, give us some con to, and, and it in turn gives us some contrast to go, whoa, that's not what I want, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and the idea is to um, even integrate those pieces, or some would call release them, or um, unravel them, or help, you know, remove the block we all have different words and none of them are, are totally accurate. Okay. But more so to bring that light into your body and you still retain the memory. Okay. But it can be a little disturbing if you bring in a big chunk of light, no matter how you bring it in. Okay. And you feel the density and the yuckiness and all the, you know, we'll just even say if you were in an accident, okay, that's painful. Okay. Mm. You had, you know, an abusive mother. That's painful, okay? And that contrast can kind of a little bit drive us crazy. 
Yeah. And that's why it's important to do this integration work. And how you integrate, everybody's recipe is different. So integration, that's, that is the key. How, because it, it occurred to me not too long ago that enlightenment is inevitable. Awakening is inevitable. As in, <laughs> you can't not awaken. <laughs> it's not something that's, you know, now you might, you might, I might stay asleep this whole life, but at a certain point, when you step out of the body, you're going to realize you're connected to the whole thing. And you're going to be like, oh, yep. wow, I was way off. You know? And so <laughs> if, if awakening is inevitable, you know, obviously to awaken is not my life goal because it's inevitable. It's, it's, that's a boring game. So, so what is the goal? Well, it seems like uh, your work helping people to integrate and for me to integrate. Integration. How do I integrate with this body? How do I get a glimpse of this infinite yeah. thing that is the true reality of who I am and how do I integrate it into this body? So uh, with that in mind, what can you give us? Because this is your work. And, and if any, once again, embodylightbody.com, uh, if you have an inkling of the beauty of this woman here that we're listening to, uh, go to her website and uh, sign up for a coffee chat. She'll connect with you uh, for free, I believe, right? A coffee chat's mm -hmm. for free. Currently for free. Might Currently not be free tomorrow. Free. But yeah, act fast. It might not be free. <laughs> no, well, you know, I, I, as I say to you, Javon, as long as it feels right, it's free. That's right. <laughs> It'll well, be free good as enough. long as it feels right. Good enough. So, so this is your specialty and you have, uh, man, it seems like every time I talk to you, I talk with you, I learned something new that you already are an expert in and you just let this <laughs> flow out. Uh, you have been such a blessing for me and in, in, in all of your modalities, but mostly it's just being with you. That's, that's been such a healing and revealing, uh, process for me. And like you said, when you, when you first talked to me, uh, you, people don't need you, but when they work with you, it speeds things up and, and miracles lay down at your feet. And that's, that's been my experience of working with you. Uh, and so, man, who would not want things, lessons to speed up and have miracles show up and just lay themselves down at your feet and heart's desire exploding into reality. Come on, embodiedlightbody.com. Get over there. So besides that, working with you can you give us something that we can apply right now before we even reach out to you or do whatever we do how can we start integrating and allowing this love and light and and this better life that is our our ultimate reality show up right now in this 3d 4d wherever we're at expression I'll start off. So how can we begin to integrate? And I'll tell you that, you know, I've really even worked with different business people who are like, Barbara, what are your steps? And I'm like, everybody's is custom. <laughs> so I, it's a, it's a challenging thing. All right. Yes. First, remember that your presence here in the body on earth, no matter how you're navigating it, is 50% of what you probably came here to do. So give yourself a break, okay? All right, be gentle with yourself. We'll start with that. My purpose is already 50, being done. Your purpose is already being done because your presence is a gift to all of us. Let that soak in. Your presence is a gift to all of us. Hmm. That is enough. All right. And then we have some overachievers like Javon and myself <laughs> and maybe some of you listening. OK, so the next piece is we all have. Uh, so the next piece I'm going to say for me mostly has been awareness. All right. So awareness that it doesn't have to be this way. Awareness that I don't like what I've got. <laughs> awareness of, you know, I, I keep talking about how I, I want to write this little book and I, I uh, called own your crap. Okay. Own your crap. Take responsibility for some of the choices that you may have made. Now, again, sometimes other people make choices that affect you. Okay. 
we can take responsibility for the choices we have made, conscious or unconscious, and start to look at them. And how might you make a different choice? So awareness is huge. And that actually goes to even some of the things, you can read books about them. You can pick up a book on things, we talked earlier, I'm trained in human design, okay? Um, since I'm expert at it, I'm trained in it, it didn't really do much for me, so I went on, right? But you can buy a book on human design and get to understand at least a template to be offered for you to feel into. Okay, so you can read a book about it. You can read a book about soul contracts. You can read a book about gene keys, okay? Shoot. I said to Javon, go watch the go watch the program Travelers about walk in. That's right. We never <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> That's all right. We'll talk about it another time. Uh, so um, I think of, of Javon's got these amazing children that I haven't met, but I've met them via video. Okay. And they are little Buddhas in disguise. And they look at the world with wonder. All right. And yes, they may fall down and hurt their knee and they're scared and they want their dad to come hug them. All right? Happens to us too. And if we can look at the world with wonder, all right? So that awareness, okay? And wonder. One of the best ways that I like to do that is like kind of get reconnected is um, through nature. And even if you live in downtown LA, you can still find a little spot of nature where you feel contained and whole and connected. Mm -hmm. Okay? It can be on your deck. It can be on a little patch of grass. It can be in a park. It can be by the ocean. Right? But time in nature. I love to spend time just like letting the sun beat on my body and remind me what a gift this is. Mm -hmm. Okay? So things that you can do are awareness. Um, I'm not so much into, like some people will say, go meditate. I don't, I do not propose meditation. What? Barbara, you're this big spiritual mentor and you say, don't meditate? <laughs> well, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> meditation is really great. Generally, again, generally to get out of your body and out of your mind. Okay. Cause our mind, what you're saying earlier, well, yeah, human design, gene keys, that's really good. It puts a, we were talking something about the mind. I don't remember what it was, but um, our mind wants to understand. Okay, so meditation for me was a great way of disconnecting from the world to remember there was something else. But to me, the big gift is to be in this body. So I do something that I call conscious meditation. All right? I scoop poop. I have a dog sled team. And when I scoop poop twice a day, that's my meditation. I call it a waking, walking meditation. I'm fully present as much as possible. If I get into my little mind game thinking about stuff, I get back into presence with my dog. For some people's children, it can be your children, right? But meditating on whatever, meditating, being present with whatever I'm doing right now. Get in your body, okay? In your body can be exercise. In your body can be getting a massage. There are somatic processes, they're called, where you get to feel into your body and some of the stagnations that are there. Okay? It is part of the pieces that we do within embodied light body, but not the full spectrum that you can do in person with, people, you know, with an actual touching. Um, but things that get you in your body, but that can be scary, okay? Because in this body, we've had experiences that told us it wasn't safe to be in our body, it wasn't safe to be in the world. So we run around disconnected from this reality, but connect with this reality, connect with it. It's good. And connect, connect with, uh, with awareness. I would imagine that, uh, mm -hmm. like you said, I can get in my mind things and, and miss the whole pleasure of being with my dogs and cleaning up and picking up poop and how, how wonderful that is. Right. Uh, brother Lawrence, a famous, uh, I think he was a Catholic monk. He, he always would talk about his time with God washing the dishes or, yes. um, or any number of things, right? I talk about my little gurus oh. being with my kids. And or how, even we said earlier, we were talking about Carolyn. Yeah. The love that Carolyn can put, not cooking as a chore, not that she cooked as a chore anyway, but the remembrance mm -hmm. 
that the cooking is a way of sharing your love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's, and she's been, uh, she's been bringing that up. She's like, uh, <laughs> such a high resonating soul. just spend, giving my love into the food and exercising. Okay. I'm like, that's right, babe. You are super high resonating. soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, it's easy. Well, uh, man, we can go on forever, Barbara, but, uh, but we won't. <laughs> but we'll do some more videos though. Let's do some more. And, and uh, this is the, the very tip of what's available from this beautiful woman. Uh, please connect with her on embodylightbody.com and um, hope to do this again. And I'm excited to, to really be partnering with you in, in, this, in this earth experience. It's been really fun so far. <laughs> so thank you for thank all your you love God. and thank, thanks for being with us. Thank you, everyone.